Are you looking for some puzzle book secrets? Well, as we start to wrap up this how to make a puzzle book series, I wanted to address the top 10 questions I've received when it comes to making puzzles. So stick around. Hey, Rat Riders, Keith Wheeler here. And if you want to continue to get all the hints, tips, and tricks on how to make self publishing easier, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, smash a little bell icon so you get alerted each and every time I put out a new video. In this series, we've covered everything from what are puzzle books to how to make puzzle books using software, how to make puzzle book pages yourself, and everything in between. And in all these weeks, I've actually gotten quite a few questions. So let's cover the top 10 puzzle book secrets. Number one, what's the difference between puzzle books and activity books? According to our trusty friends over at Wikipedia, an activity book is a type of book generally aimed towards children which contains interactive content such as games, puzzles, quizzes, coloring pages, etc. While a puzzle book is a collection of puzzles for the reader to complete. Puzzle books can contain puzzles of all the same type or multiple types of puzzles. So simply put, puzzle books are a type of activity book. It's kind of like the square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. Anyway, number two, should I do an activity book or should I do a puzzle book? The answer to this really depends. It depends on your niche and the age of your customer. Activity books, like I said earlier, are usually more aimed towards kids, but why not step outside the box and try it for adults? For this series, obviously I focused a lot on puzzle books. Whether you make the puzzles yourself or you use puzzle book software like Puzzle Book Mastery or the new kids puzzle book software. But like I said, why not try to spice things up and make it into an activity book? You can throw in some quizzes, the coloring pages, dot to dots, things like that. Adult coloring books are really big right now, so maybe a couple of coloring pages in there could absolutely help. Again, it really depends on your particular niche. What are people in that age group and people that are interested in that topic, what kind of things are they looking for? That's actually a really good reason why, and I've talked about this before, you really want to try to get an email list going for your puzzle books or activity books. Because then once they sign up for your email list, they're your customers. Then you can send them quick surveys. You know, one or two questions, but again, they're your customers now, so you can ask them, do you like puzzle books? Do you like activity books? Do you like both? You know, just give them one question where it's multiple choice and find out what they like. Number three, how many pages should my puzzle book be? This is a huge question that I get almost daily. And the answer is pretty simple. Look at your competition, see what they're doing. Go into Amazon or wherever platform you're selling your books on and search up your major keyword and look at the top 10, top 20, go down to the product description and see how many pages it is. Figure out what the average is and that tells you what your customers are used to. Now, can you do a few pages, last few pages more? Absolutely. Nothing's written in stone, but this gives you a really good guide as to what they're expecting and what they're used to. Let me give you a quick example. One of my students did a 150 page puzzle book, but his competition was only doing 80 pages. Once he told me this, I told him, you know, I would aim towards more towards the 80 pages, maybe 90, but he was basically giving the content of almost two books all in one, all for the same price as the competition. Yeah, he was selling more books than they were, but he could have got two books out with almost the same amount of pages. Number four, should I do a puzzle book with all one type of puzzles or multiple types? Well, my answer to that is try both. There are people that buy just word search puzzles or just Sudoku puzzles. But that said, there's also a whole nother group of people that love the variety that comes with multiple puzzles in the same book. So for your particular niche, I say try both. Now, I'm not saying go all out and create 10 books of both types, you know, but maybe create one or two of each type for your particular niche and see what sells. That way you're accommodating both types of customers, bettering your chances of puzzle book sales. Number five, should I do just one book or should I do a series? To start with, I would say just one or two books in that particular niche. And if you want to do, like I said in the last question, if you want to do one or two puzzle books with a variety of puzzles in each book, and then maybe a couple that are just specific to one type of puzzle, then that's fine. But there's no sense in going all in until you've got proven sales. Now, 
once you've got a few sales then double down and make that series well that leads me right into number six which is how long should the series be I always do a series usually between five and ten books more towards the ten number one I have OCD so it always has to be in increments of five for me but that's completely up to you but the important part is you want to make sure that you've got enough variety and enough options that people can keep coming back and buying more and a lot of times the die-hard puzzle book buying customers they'll buy multiple books all at once so the more you have available the better your chances of getting multiple sales number seven and this is a big question that I get quite frequently which is should I just use the same puzzle and put a different cover on each one the answer to that is very simple absolutely not that's a quick way to get negative reviews on your puzzle books think about it it's not like a journal where the interior can be exactly the same time and time again these are puzzles that people are doing which means if they buy another book from you and see that even a few of them are the same as they were before they're most likely not gonna buy another one and they're even more likely to leave you a negative review you want to make sure you give them the best quality books you can and again always have new puzzles in there the only exception would be if you have some kind of custom puzzle that really doesn't change like I taught in the previous video where I show you how to make custom dice those type of games that's okay to keep them included in each of your books because it it ties them all together it's not a puzzle in itself it's more of a game that's fine number eight and this is by far my most frequently asked question and it is how do I sell more puzzle books well first and foremost as I alluded to before make sure that you're giving your customer the best product you absolutely can just like with any no content or low content book you've got to make the interior special make it different from your competition these are consumables which means that people use them and then they have to get a replacement so if your book is different if yours is more unique then they're more likely to come back and get yours especially if you have like I showed in previous videos that that custom game that's something that they can only find in your books so if they like it they have to buy your books they have to and when you make it different in a positive way you have a much better chance of getting positive reviews on your book Getting reviews on puzzle books are very rare so in order to better your chances you've got to make your book really stand out here's an example I've talked about this before but if I'm doing a puzzle book on golf and I decide that I want to make a custom game in there maybe you've got custom dice or whatever but besides that game just putting little nuances that have to do with golf throughout the book you know just like maybe down in the bottom left hand corner on one of the puzzles there's a, a hole with a flag on it again little nuances in there that make your book stand out you know like I said a flag on one page and you know maybe a little golf ball it doesn't have to take up the whole page obviously because your puzzle needs to be the focus but little added bits and pieces here and there little background images it can still be in black and white it doesn't have to be in color and rack up of the book it makes the book stand out it makes it more unique as opposed to if you just had a book that just has puzzles in it if you have a book that just has puzzles no images inside it nothing custom then what makes your book stand out from the competition nothing but by putting these little nuances in there that's what makes your book special that's what makes your customers come back for more each and every time and that's how you sell your series number nine what should I put on my cover now if at all possible you want to include something that's niche specific something that will let your customer know right off the bat looking at the thumbnail that this is something they want to buy something that they're interested in to use the golf example from before you know have a golf green or a golf ball or something that has to do with golf golf bags that let them know that this is something that they're interested in next you always want the words puzzle book or activity book somewhere prominent on the front cover so that way from a thumbnail size your customer knows exactly what they're getting and you always and I'll repeat always want to include an image of the interior either on the front or on the back preferably on the front but depending on the words and other images that you have on the front sometimes that's not realistic but again you always want to include images of the interior on your book cover now if you're doing 
a book with just one puzzle type like a Sudoku or a word search or something like that, a book just to cryptograms, whatever, then you can just include one image because the interiors are all the same type. But if you have a variety book, you want to make sure that you also include images of at least a few of the different puzzle types that they're going to find on the inside. Again, that way they know from looking at the cover what they can expect. Now when it comes to your name or your pen name, there's no need to put that on your cover because to be honest, it's a puzzle book or activity book and most customers, they just don't care. You know, they want to do an activity book, they want to do a puzzle book, but they don't necessarily care who created it. One exception to this would be, like in my case for my softball series, I have so many books in that niche, I actually do include my name on some of my puzzle books. But again, that's because it's very niche down and I have a following specific around that niche. But again, that's the exception, not the rule. Now I'm about ready to go over number 10, but before I do, I wanna let you know, I actually have a bonus question coming up right after this. So make sure that you stick around. And in the meantime, if you like the puzzle book secrets I've given out so far, I want you to click on that like button three times. Number 10, should I do a large print puzzle book or not? Again, that's gonna depend. If your niche is geared towards the elderly or younger children, then you probably do want to utilize large print. Also, keep in mind that the size of the large print will again depend on that particular group. Technically, large print is anything that's 16 point font or larger. Now, some age groups and niches may require larger font than 16 points. For example, if your niche is geared more towards visually impaired, then obviously you're going to want your font to be higher than 16 points probably closer to the 20, 22 point font. So again, it depends on your particular niche. Now that said, for other niches and age groups, the customers may actually not want large print because when you do large print, then that means that there's less room for the puzzle content itself. So again, you wanna to try to gear it towards your particular niche. Now, if your book is large print, you also wanna include the words large print on your cover itself, again, that way, just by looking at the thumbnail, your customer can see that it's large print. And if it's something that they're looking for, then they'll know right from looking at your cover. Now it's time for the bonus tip. Final secrets to puzzle book success. My answer to that is just like with any book that you create, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, low content, no content, you need to look at your competitors' reviews. Now, I know there are people that say, don't focus so much on your competition, and, and that's true to some extent. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. But in order to do your due diligence, you wanna make sure that you check out your competition's reviews. Focus on the positive, but more importantly, focus on the negative reviews, the ones, the twos, and the threes that they get, and see what the content is, the content of the review. You may see that, People are saying the point font is too big or too small, or there's too many of a certain type of puzzle. There's not enough of another type of puzzle. These are all great ways that you can learn from and implement into your own book. And not only that, but then you use those same words, the same idea in your ad copy. So something like if, if you see that your competition is saying that there's not enough cryptograms, then you can say in your ad copy, not getting enough cryptograms in your puzzle books? Well, then you're gonna to wanna to check out this one with 10% more cryptograms, something like that. Now, if you're looking for other ways to make money on Amazon, then you might wanna check out the new Amazon Ignite program. Click right here, and I'll show you everything you need to know about Ignite. Or you can check out this video that YouTube has lined up and they think you'll love. I'll catch you in the next video, and remember to write right.